All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be installing a storm door window here on my basement walkout. Um, I've already kind of done this in the front, but I'm gonna give you guys the lowdown on how to go about installing one of these in your own space. So first thing you're gonna to need to do is measure your entryway size. Um, I've already done that. Um, I measured from this trim here to here. It's 32 by 78 in the height. Make sure you measure from where it's going to mount from. So my trim here, every application is going to kind of be different, but my trim is a little bit, a little bit wider than my actual and open, and actual opening. So um, 32 by 78 is a standard size. Most doors will be a standard size. Uh, it's going to be 30, 32, 34, 36, or the height will be 78 or 80. So I picked up a 32 by 78 door at Home Depot. Uh, it's an MCO 300 series. Uh, for this installation, I'll need to use uh, a drill. I will need to put some holes in it for sure. So I'm going to use a drill and an impact driver for installation. You can lay down your storm door and you can open it up with a utility blade, just being careful not to scratch the door. All right, guys, I'm just as guilty as everyone else. Actually read the instructions. It's going to be different for every door. So um, if you're not installing an MCO 300, you'll need to look through this guide and maybe see what's a little different. Granted, most of these doors are pretty similar, so especially when you get the bottom to your doors, so um, just make sure you look through this guide. Make sure all your parts are there before you get started. Because I hear a lot that they're just missing stuff all the time. So, see there's your standard opening sizes there. So, we're gonna go ahead and get started. One thing they do provide extra is this shim. Um, if your door is a little bit bigger than the opening, um, let's say, you know, it's 32 and an eighth or 32 and three eighths or so, you can add this shim and it'll allow the, the jam to come in a little bit more. Um, my door is 32, so I don't need this piece. You'll need to go ahead and remove the two screws on the same side that you plan to put the hinge on. You'll use these screws to line up the, the hinge in its appropriate place and then drill the rest of the holes. All right guys, so, so this next step, you're gonna need to grab your pink bag here. Um, make sure you're hinging your door on the correct side. So mine's gonna open from the right hand, so the hinge is gonna be on the left side of the door. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll pick this up. I've already removed the two screws in the middle. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take this piece and lay it in the frame so that the hinges go inside and so as they're not exposed. Then in the bag you're supplied both a drill bit and the appropriate screws to put this in. Alright guys, learn from my mistakes. When you install it, it's the second screw from the bottom. Second hinge from the bottom. So go up here and look, it's right there. It's one of the screws you took out earlier. I put it over here like an idiot so i've had to pull this apart and i'll put them back in so like i said no professional diy channel and learn from my mistakes with the hinge now positioned properly you can go ahead and pre-drill and install the rest of the supplied screws to all of the hinges on the door all right guys next you're going to need to pre-drill the holes in here and install two screws you want to make sure that this bottom sweep piece is attached all the way up, but you're going to want to install the screws at the bottom of the hole. Center punch will help guide you in if you need to. Um, just put it on there and hammer it just to give yourself a guide. I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes because I'm fairly confident. What else you're gonna wanna do is you, you're gonna need to slide this screw out a little bit and install this spacer. This will ensure that the door is seated properly at its appropriate height. All right. And then next you can take this clip and mount it close to the bottom here. It's even sided, so 
doesn't matter which side, but... Uh. Next, I lifted up the door and placed it within its frame. I tried to position it all the way against the left side and install one screw at the top left hand corner just to hold it in place for now. Alright guys, once you're happy with how the door is gapped at the top of the frame, um, look along the other sides of the frame, you know? These are all going to be more variable than the top, so what I'm going to do is only put one more screw in the bottom. And then I will go ahead and move on with the rest of the installation. This will allow me to tweak it at the end. If I put everything in at once, I won't be able to get it in with a nice fit. So always assemble with a little bit at a time. Just be careful. It won't be screwed in, so you can't manhandle it. You don't want to rip it off the frame. So we're going to go ahead and move on, put one more screw at the bottom, and then move on to installing the top rail. So next you can take your top piece and place it at the top of the frame, making sure that the gap on the door is still looking very good. Once you're satisfied, place one screw in the middle. One thing they want you to do is take these foam pads. We're going to open ahead and open the door, lift it up a little bit to get it unstuck, and then six inches down we're going to install these pads. Next you can go ahead and install the other side of the frame. The felt pads will serve as a guide to set the appropriate gap. So you want to make sure they just touch those felt pads and then I'm going to go ahead and secure it with two screws at the top and bottom of the frame. That way I can always modify it later again if the gap is incorrect. Alright, so at this point I've only got five screws holding the door and so what I would like to do is I'm going to pan up and we're going to take a look at the door gaps here. You want to make sure your door gaps are nice and even so it looks like a good professional installation. I learned that doing my front door. So I'm like really happy with the way this turned out. All my gaps are pretty much on spot so I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the screws in and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, well if you're using the same window, you'll notice I didn't follow exactly what they said. I'm just doing this in a way that made the most sense to me when I put my other door in. Granted, the other door was an Anderson like 4000 series, super expensive, already pre-cased and a lot of extra, a lot easier to install than one of these doors to be honest and almost worth the money. So unfortunately they didn't sell it and then have to do a custom one and that might be a lot of money i didn't really look into it too much but this is for the basement so not super concerned this was door was about 250 bucks whereas the one on my front door is about 500 so um i didn't install the drip rail yet because i didn't get enough screws so i'm gonna see what i have at the end and decide what to use or i'll use some screws i have hanging around my basement Alright guys, many of you might have found this confusing as did I, so what you need to do is reach up, grab the screen, and pull it in, and then all it simply does is you'll see there's a little lip here and it tucks under this piece. So pull it down, push it forward, and make sure it clamps in. It's not my favorite design in the world, but I guess it does work, so it keeps the door window from falling, so and that's it. Alright guys, the next part is the part I've been dreading this whole time, installing the door handle. Um, buy a nice door, it's already basically cut out, ready to roll, so I'm going to crack those instructions open, and you're probably going to want to read that, because it might be helpful, but honestly these instructions haven't been the best, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I hope you guys find this video helpful, because I learned a lot installing this door, that's for sure. Alright guys, first step, we're going to take this template that they provide us and we're going to measure to the center of the door, line it up with this line. I'm going to tape this to the door and I assume we're going to use this as a template for drilling all of our holes. I'm going to go ahead and mark it at 38. One thing to note with this installation, they do not include the appropriate drill bits to do these holes, so you're going to have to 
manage on your own, which is difficult because five ace drill bits, far and few. So I'm gonna see what I have. I usually only go up to half inch, so we'll see what happens. I started out by piloting all my holes with the supplied drill bit that I used earlier. I went through a little bit on each side and then went to the other side and pushed all the way through to ensure that the holes were as straight as possible. Now I'm gonna go get my drill bits, see if I can't find that five ace. All right guys, just so you know, your standard set of bits will not come with a 7 16 So if you're at the store, get a 7 16 and a 5 8 or you're gonna need one of these kits, which does have a 7 16 but still doesn't have a 5 8 So what I'm gonna do for that 5 8 hole is kind of oblong it with my half inch bit and then use a step bit just to get the aluminum to be the right hole size and I should be able to get it in. So we got some burrs here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my step drill bit again. I'm just kinda go in there and slightly clean up those holes a little bit. It can only go one way. Slide this through here, slide it in, just like that. And then you install your screws. Make sure your lock's facing the right way. Turn open that way. So we'll go like this. Lift your handles in. Make sure you tighten this Allen key because that's the only thing that keeps this from coming out. So use a splat Allen key and tighten that up. And make sure to do the same with the other side as well. All right, next we're gonna install our striker plates. Um, they give you two plates, one for the lock, one for the latch. And they give you these shims in case you don't quite reach out from the frame, which I might be needing, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. All right, so here we are at the inner door jam, and we need this striker plate to latch on this door, but it's way too far in. So what we're gonna have to do is really space this thing out so we can get it all the way in there. So first step we're gonna do is I'm just going to Hold the door shut and mark where we need to be. And then from there, we can go ahead and install these shims and the screws to go with it. Take your time and make sure you get this right. You're gonna want to close the uh, nicely and you might take more than one shot. My kit did not come supplied with the instructions on how to install this, so judging from the pictures, I installed it close to the bottom of the window and put in the three screws with the latch and then installed the third screw to hold it in hold the anchor in place to allow the buffer to attach to the door. Then I made sure the buffer and the uh, attachment bracket were level and then used the supplied bigger screws, the wider screws, to install them onto the door. Once installed, I could put the pin in and then you can vary the Phillips head screw at the end of the buffer to determine how quickly it closes. You can then also use the bracket to adjust where it closes and you'll need to take a lot of time to make sure that this closes properly. It may take many times to actually get it right. As you can see, there's a gap here that we will address later. Now is a good time to go ahead and install that lower bottom door seal and then cut off the remaining excess with the utility blade. Next, you can also choose to install the striker for the door lock. Alright guys, because our door frame is probably not straight, we got a little bit of gap there at the top, so I'm going to take this extra cedar shingle I have hanging around. I'm just going to score the striker on there, just so I can wedge it at the top of the frame, and zip it back down, and hopefully that fixes our gap problem. As you can see, that really fixed the gap and gave us a nice tight seal all the way around the door. 
Next, I went and installed the rain cap with the remaining screws and used a little silicone to seal any gaps in the door frame. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and please subscribe.